What is happening ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Agro VR. I finally got my graphics set in DCS in virtual reality set to the point where graphically it looks very realistic. I have tried everything. I'm telling you since I started playing this simulator uh, I'm sure there's a lot of you that have the same problem. <laughs> we get into the flight sim. Graphics don't look that good. Uh, legs so you're dropping frames. Um, so for me or anybody out there that has a graphics card like an NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super or greater, so 30 series cards or 2070, 2070 Super, you get my point, right? Anyways, uh, we're gonna go over the details of that. But right after that, we're gonna go into the details of the F-22 Raptor as we fly it in DCS. This was a free download from Grinelli Designs. And let me just say it is by far my favorite fighter jet ever created for a very good reason. Uh, we will go over the details and specs of the F-22, like I said. And before that, we are going to go over what I did and what works for me. It may not work for you. Uh, I'm looking for more of a realistic feel in flying or any flight simulator. And this really is the cherry on top for graphics for me. And uh, so don't troll me because you might have a totally different setup. I can give you the specs of what I'm using and what works for me. Anyways, without further ado, let's dive in. Here we go. Okay, here we are. Uh, this is probably best practice. Uh, it's actually working for me very well. Uh, go to GeForce Experience and we're gonna check for updates on drivers. That is provided you have an NVIDIA graphics card, AMD. Same process, just a little different, I guess. Check for updates, uh, do a refresh. It appears that we're up to date. I'm a firm believer on updating my drivers at all times. Next up, we're gonna do a disk space clear. We're gonna clear the trash regardless of the size. 43 megabytes, not a big deal. I'm gonna clean it anyways. After this, we're gonna go into the task manager. If there's any third party apps that are running, it could bottleneck your CPU depending on the severity of the app that is running. It's good practice just to check this. Uh, scroll down the list. You can always do a four stop of any third party apps that you don't want running at the time. Still think best practice would be to go right into the startup menu and disable any apps that aren't necessary at that moment. Uh, you can always re-enable them uh, after the fact, after you play. After this, I'm gonna go into Norton Security and we're actually just gonna do a performance optimization, clear some files or file cleanup again. You can optimize drives, but I'm using an SSD, not quite necessary. Optimized disk, more like uh, if you have a hard disk drive, that would be mandatory, something that you want to do. Go into NVIDIA control panel. We're not playing on a flat, so G-Sync doesn't really matter at the moment. But what we are going to do is we're going to go into manage 3D settings. Click that, then click global settings. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. Virtual reality variable rate super sampling. Turn that to off. Just above it, pre-rendered frames, set that to 3. Again, this is all your preference. Uh, if you find that this settings that I'm giving you today are running your PC a little hot, you can always dial it down. I'm gonna run at 90 Hertz. Some people find it better running at 80 Hertz, dial it down a bit, maybe a bit smoother, but I'm looking for probably more realistic graphics. Next up, we're gonna go into graphics. Graphics settings and hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. I would turn that to off. Just in gaming in general, I don't really find that needed. Uh, variable refresh rate, turn that to off as well. We're gonna close that out. We're gonna go into Windows security. I'm gonna do a little health check and performance on my PC. No issues, close that out. We're gonna come back again to Windows, but we're gonna check for an update. Uh, this is another practice you might want to stay on top of as well, especially if you're playing any heavy games like Digital Combat Simulator. 
it appears that we are up to date. We're good. What should we do? NVIDIA control. I don't think there's... No, we've done everything that we need to do there, especially for virtual reality. Other date, we might screw around with some other settings, but this is what's working at the moment. We're gonna go to Intel, driver support, and software. We're gonna refresh and see if we're up to date. If we are, which we are, uh, a few more steps here. We're gonna go in and make sure that all, uh, well, I have an eight core processor. So you're gonna hit run under the search, MS config, uh, go to where it says boot down to advanced options, number of processors. Choose eight if you have an eight core processor, uh, 16, you get the point, four. Anyways, uh, we'll go down, uh, no GUI boot, timeout, 10 seconds, just something I did, hit apply. And uh, next up and last for this part of this uh, video, we're gonna go into power and sleep settings. Scroll down to where it says additional power settings. Choose high performance. Click out of there. And next up, you're gonna click into your Oculus app. We're gonna go to where it says devices, click on there. Scroll down to where it says graphics preferences. Automatic recommended, uh, I chose 90 Hertz. And like I said, you can always dial back down to 80 Hertz. I set mine, you'll have to hit OK and jump out for that to take effect. OK, last but not least, uh, we're going to go uh, into DCS. We're just going to wait for this little promotion deal thing and we're going to jump out of that. So exit that out, close it out. Uh, we're going to go into in-game graphic settings, so go to the gear icon. Uh, we're going to set our textures to high. This won't kill your GPU and does impact quality. So don't skimp unless you have to. Terrain textures, we're going to set that to high as well. This determines how terrain looks. It's not terribly super important. Civil traffic turned off. Water, always high because, well, it looks awesome. Uh, visible range, I'm just going to set that to medium as in virtual reality, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, heat blur, we're going to turn that actually to off. I find that's more effective on a flat. Shadows, we're gonna keep that very high <laughs> because it just looks fantastic. Resolution, because we're gonna be playing in VR, we're gonna set it to 1920 by 1080. Aspect ratio, follow that. Monitors one screen, Reza cockpit 1024, MSAA, I would go times two if you have a mid to high end graphics card. Depth of field off, lens effect, none. Motion blur off, I just find it kind of weird. Clouds set to high because they just look fantastic. Everything else off. Clutter and grass, 170. Um, not a huge deal, I find. I'm kind of a ground hugger, but it doesn't really matter that much. And I don't want it uh, affecting the system too much. I keep it low. Forest visibility at 76%. Forest detail factor, 0.7. Scenery detail factor, 0.73. And the preload radius, I usually run around 90,000. Chimney smoke at one and gamma at 1.3. Anastropic filtering at 16 times. Uh, terrain, object, shadows, default, cockpit, global illumination set to off. Message font scale will set to one. Scale GUI, one, rain droplets on, and full screen. These are all just my preference, works for me. Next up, we're gonna go into the VR tab, top right. Pixel density, I set to 1.3. Now, if this is affecting your system and your gameplay, dial it back down to 1.2. Force IPD distance for me, 60. MSAA mass size, 0.42. That'll be all for the details of what I'm using. Like I said, you can always dial it back if it's not working for you. Uh, 80 hertz, a lot of people find more smooth gameplay. I, I'm looking for high graphics or you know realistic. Anyways, next we're going to go into the F-22 Raptor. I will do a short video and detailed on the specs of the aircraft. Here we go. The Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor is an American single-seat, twin-engine, all-weather, stealth, tactical fighter aircraft developed exclusively for the United States Air Force. 
the result of the United States Air Force's advanced tactical fighter program? The aircraft was designed primarily as an air superiority fighter, but also has ground attack, electronic warfare, and signal intelligence capabilities. The prime contractor Lockheed Martin built most of the F-22's airframe and weapon systems and conducted final assembly, while Boeing provided the wings, aft, fuselage, avionics integration, and the training systems. The YF-22 was originally given the unofficial name Lightning II after the World War II Lockheed P-38 Lightning Fighter which persisted until the mid-1990s, when the USAF officially named the aircraft Raptor Lightning II was later given to the F-35. The aircraft was also briefly dubbed the Superstar and Rapier. In 2002 of September, USAF changed the Raptor's designation to F-A-22, mimicking the Navy's McDonnell Douglas's F-A-18 Hornet and intended to highlight a planned group attack capability amid debate over the aircraft's role and relevance. Flight testing of the F-22 began back in 1997 with Raptor 4001. The first EMD jet and eight more EMD F-22s would participate in the flight test program as the combined test force the CTF at Edwards Air Force Base. This aircraft has a significant capability to attack surface targets. In the air-to-ground configuration, the aircraft can carry two 1,000-pound GBU-32 joint direct attack munitions internally and will use an onboard avionics for navigation and weapons delivery support. This aircraft is without question the most lethal and survivable fighter aircraft in operational service anywhere in the world and remains unlikely to be challenged in raw capability terms by any of the latest generation of combat aircraft under development by either Russia or China. For its primary air-to-air -air role, the F-22 will carry six AIM-120C and two AIM-9 missiles. Like other stealth aircraft, the F-A-22 can carry weapons inside the fuselage. Hidden behind a stealth door above the right air intake is the M61A2 20mm multi-barrel cannon. It holds 480 rounds of 20mm ammunition and feeds the gun at a rate of 100 rounds per second. In my humble opinion, I believe this aircraft really didn't need any sort of introduction. Um, this module through DCS is brought to you by Grinelli Designs, and in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of you believe the same, is the best aircraft free module that you can download. Again, that is Grinelli Designs. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. These videos may not seem like a lot, but they do take a lot of time. Uh, I also appreciate a little feedback. Uh, if there's any videos that you'd like to see in the near future, don't hesitate to comment below. Leave a like, ring that bell, but most importantly, stay safe. Bye for now.